freak, you brought a friend? Yeah, I have a friend. I have a friend. <laughs> you a nice little friend. Hey. <laughs> Is that Pam you- Pizza? Yeah, he'll be joining us for the podcast today. It feels so <laughs> weird to like have like merchandise of someone that you know. <laughs> yeah, for real. That's great. I wonder how people will react if I had one of these things. Yeah, me Who too. Knows? What a mm. crazy thought. Yeah. I well, would buy back one. In dream, right? Yeah. I, I would I'm hope in, you in would. Dream, though. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely buy one. I would buy one and then I would put it I would put it right here for every podcast next to my That's Cartman's. Really funny. <laughs> it would be weird. You would be in you would be in both frames. It would be confusing. Yeah. I'm never <laughs> off screen. Nope. I'm always I'm never. always doing something. And if you got one, I would <laughs> put it you probably right there. It bought it bought bought of pillows. Absolutely. No one would buy one of me. It would never happen. I think you are a liar. I think people would love to buy uh, a plush of you because I know I would. Oh, man, if they could like. I appreciate that. Fam, if they could, which is like, I know that's not what makeshift doesn't do that stuff. Maybe. I don't know. But if they like, if they like made your hair real hair, like that would be so- <laughs> <laughs> like if they didn't just make like a cartoony mold of it. Like if it was just fucking like Barbie hair, like that would be right. I have to send them, send them in my real hair to put on my, on the doll of me. All 200 <laughs> something of them. Yeah. <laughs> I also just realized that we started this podcast by showing something on screen. So for the people listening at home, they're gonna be like, what the fuck are you uh, talking oops. about? <laughs> I didn't, you know, okay. Actually, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this maybe 10 minutes before I hopped in here. I was thinking about how, like, it is a blessing and a curse that we agreed to do uh, visual and audio. Uh, it's a it's a curse because, like, there's, like, more maintenance stuff, right? Like, I got to, uh, I don't know, like, I got to, I can't get, I can't look too bummy. You know what I mean? I'm in front of people. Right. So, like, you know, yeah. but, however... It does make me make sure that my room stays clean. Like it can't. It's a good point. I, it can't get messed up. Like it just has to. It has to look. It has to look well. <laughs> I just have I'm to keep looking. this this corner clean. Over there is a mess. I got two animals sleeping on my bed right now that you can't it's, see. It's pretty like weird. it's it's like just this little corner of my room. I keep pretty tidy. But even so, not that tidy. Like if I moved myself, you'd probably kind of see it see a bunch of wires and junk over there so yeah. you know it helps a little bit that. yeah it, it, it at least keeps bit. one section of the room <laughs> yeah clean. like my bed isn't even really properly made right now just this corner just this corner Man. is nice and, and neat <laughs> there is there is laundry right next to me that like i just oh there's laundry <laughs> oh there's laundry <laughs> yeah there's laundry right next to uh, me. It's clean laundry but it's, it's laundry nevertheless i haven't folded it or anything like that you know what's even funnier is you so you showed off that plushie but when i when i when you showed it off so for the people at home i just said is that pan pizza so they might be thinking you're holding up a pizza oh <laughs> no i am i was holding <laughs> i was holding my friend or rabble taxi me and johnny's colleague our friend <laughs> yeah yeah good guy he's he, he like yeah. set the bar for a lot of the cartoon youtubers out there yeah i was trying to explain to somebody that he's like uh he's like our simpsons <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if they fully grasp the concept yeah. but... we'll have to ha- we'll have to invite him on the pod someday see, yeah. uh, see if he see if he wants to he does his own. He does a lot of other stuff. So, right. He's a busy guy. You'll have well, to maybe, ask him because I think you know him better than me. Maybe he'll just want to take a nap too, which is fine. We can take a sleepy pod. Yeah, let's do an Epcast. Sleep. <laughs> sleepy pod. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, this is uh, cartoons that nap. Uh, thank you guys for joining us today. All right, let's just cue the theme song so we can start talking about future. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I've been watching them for years. It's always been something that fit with all the animated characters that's doing their own bits. With a fry who's in the future and a family guy that sucks. It's a father from a Hello Burger family that is about to show and spies is the same guy, except he totally is same- Diverse. Let's watch cartoons that uh, Yeah, that's bananas. <laughs> As rough. <laughs>
What the f*** is up, everybody? Welcome to Cartoons That Curse, the podcast about cartoons that say swear words. I am John Piricello. You might know me as Johnny Two Cellos. This is my co-host, Tariq, a.k.a. Tunerific Tariq. How are you, Tariq? I, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. Uh, the film isn't all right, but I'm all right. How are you mm. doing? Mm. Let it be known that Tariq <laughs> is all right. <laughs> um, I am. I'm also yeah. doing pretty good. <laughs> doing pretty, pretty good. Been working all day. I'm ready to talk about my least favorite Futurama movie. Uh, so <laughs> let's, yeah, let's do it. If you've been following along, you know we've been covering the Futurama movies, starting with Bender's Big Score, moving on to The Beast with a Billion Backs. And now we're covering Bender's did Game. You say, did you say billion or billion? I said billion, uh, but billion okay. would have worked as well. <laughs> All right. Beast I with a billion I, backs. I thought you, you missed did one of those one, things. You ever see like one of those like true false text tests where you write like T or F and like sometimes you like make it look like a T or an F so like the teacher gets confused. <laughs> I thought you did one of those just now. <laughs> I have never tried that, but I like that. I like that strategy. <laughs> I'll just show you how it looks. It looks kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's super funny. Um, so yeah, we well if you if you. We're confused about this. We had Billiam uh, of the YouTube channel Billiam on last week, who is a charming and lovely man. And I it's had a great a time chatting guy. with him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a great time. We talked to uh, Beast with a Billion Backs and uh, I had a, it was a good time. It was a good, good little chat. Good little yeah. chat about that, that, sh- uh, that movie. Uh, but today we got to talk about Bender's Game. Bender's Game, the third of... Four. And this is the first time you'd seen this one, correct, Tariq? This is the first time I've seen I've seen I think I've seen, seen the, the rest first, of them, though. Yeah, I have. And I think I've seen the first three minutes of this one. And okay. that's literally it. Because I remember I remember like the die, the die. And the then die, like after yeah, that, yeah. everything the is yellow su- I will say the, the yellow submarine <laughs> parody at the top rules. That's pretty cool. When they uh the intro thing it, when they go into the screen. I think it's uh I think it is like nicely made, but even then it's still my least favorite of all of these, the intros. Really? Yeah. I like it. Mm, Cause do you I like it more my... than Beast with a Billion Bax's one? Cause that has the. I think I like them about the same. I don't know, but, okay. but, but I'm also like a big Beatles guy and I like that psychedelic art style. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah so I, so I like them about the same for different reasons, but I think my, I think the next one, the one coming up after this might be my favorite because of the See, that's the where like that's where my tie <laughs> is. It's a tie between the yeah. next one and Bender's Big Score. But Bender's Big Score I feel like is only for like emotional reasons, sentimental reasons. Right. But like Yeah, I agree. I like the Bender's Big Score one because I resonate with the excitement of that show coming back mm-hmm. a lot. <laughs> and that yeah. was what was exciting about that intro. It hinges um, on that. I feel like if you're like a person that's getting into Futurama now and you just kind of have all this disposable content in front of you, like you don't really get that impact that they were going right. for with that. So I yep. get it. I'll agree with you there. Um, so Bender's Game is the this is their fantasy movie, which, you know, obviously the show is made by a bunch of dorks. They all love uh-huh. D&D and fantasy, but also like sci fi is their thing for this show. And this is their first real foray into the fantasy world um, until Disenchantment a few years later. But uh, so this has a very different feel. I yes. do. I, I will say I do love the DVD art, the cover. It's really nice. I think the fantasy stuff looks really good. Actually, all of the covers on the of the DVDs for these movies are really nice. I think they especially the really last good. three because Bender's Big Score does look great, but it was before they were doing that old timey uh, movie yeah. poster thing. Agreed. Bender's Big Score is is exciting. Same reason that it, the intro of it is exciting. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, Futurama's back. Here they are. Uh, but the, but Beast with a Billion Backs, Bender's Game, Into the Wild Green Yonder, those DVD c- cases and covers are gorgeous. They're right, like beautiful, yeah. beautiful art. Um, so, But this is like a really weird one. This one is really weird, and I think I can pinpoint why. I talked about it a little bit last week, 
And I've been talking about it a lot to myself this week because I'm making a video about these movies, spoilers, mm-hmm. uh, which actually that video will be out before this. I'm about to episode. say it'll probably so, be so not spoilers, <laughs> reverse spoilers. <laughs> Go watch it after this. Uh, <laughs> um, so this, though, is uh, this one is the one script out of all of these films that was written by a bunch of people. Um, yeah, it has like that part stuff on it, right? Exactly. And so every other, all three of the other movies were stories where the story credit went to whoever the screenwriter was plus David X. Cohen. And then the screenplay credit went to the whatever the writer was who wrote the screenplay. This one, the story credit goes to Eric Horstead and David X. David X. Cohen. Eric Horstead is, I guess, the guy who spearheaded this one in terms of various writers from the writer's room. But he's only credited as having written parts one and two of the script, whereas they have Michael Rowe and Eric Kaplan writing part three and David X. Cohen and Patrick M. Verone writing part four. And I definitely think that this is the movie that feels the most segmented Mm -hmm. uh, out of all four of these movies. Like you can feel that these each part was written by someone different, I think. At least to me. I agree. Um, And I've gone over in my head. I don't know if this was just a time crunch thing. If it was just like, well, we need to get through this production and get it done. Or if it was maybe a situation where like, oh, Mike, these other writers know the fantasy elements better than Eric Horstead. And so they should pen the scripts that are all about the fantasy stuff. Like I could totally see that being the case too. Right. Um, which I guess like on paper, don't hate that strategy if that's what the situation was. But it just again, this one feels it feels like two halves of one two that each half of this movie feel very separate to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tariq, yeah. how'd you feel about Bender's game? Give me the broad strokes. What, what do you think? OK, let's get down to brass sex. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I know I know how. Uh, I don't know. Everybody who listens to this podcast knows how much I love Futurama, but this is probably the most bored I've ever been watching Futurama. Like, I just by there were times where like I couldn't turn it off. Like I couldn't turn it off because we had to talk about it. But like there were times <laughs> like around the middle and the end where I'm like, man, how much longer <laughs> is this? Like, what else is this? And I think, I think uh, my issue might come from like the same it's kind of a problem i had with uh beast with a billion backs but it's really present here where it's like i can't tell like what and it's gonna sound stupid when i say it out loud but it's like i can't tell what the movie's about meaning that i can't like what who who's learning something like what is there i granted these are all technically the different episodes but like what's the arc like, you know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like I can't, I couldn't, the whole time I was like, okay, so who's, whose story am I supposed to be following? Who am I supposed to care about? Whose emotions am I supposed to care about? Like that kind of thing. And yeah, they, and then that thing happens that you and William told me about. Uh, mm-hmm. And like, yeah, I feel like if I didn't know and I saw this, I'd probably be, uh, pissed off if I came in here really excited and you told me that it's never brought up again. Right. Because it is a good reveal, honestly. Like, it's not even a bad reveal. Right. It's just annoying that it's ignored forever after this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so, what's the guy's name? Igner. Igner. The youngest of mom's sons. We find out that Igner is uh, related. Uh, who? Not related. We find out that Igner is Farnsworth's son. Yes, uh, with mom, with mom, and yeah, they just kind of don't do anything with that for the rest of the show, and that's really dumb because like this, I mean, she's related to Fry, and like you know, what I mean, that, and Hubert, he's got a brother, and Hubert, yeah. So like, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of stuff that could like could happen, um, and they just that they just don't do, uh, and also. Okay, I have my notes too. It's like with, with Beasts of a Billion Backs, like, while even though I did kind of feel like it was segmented and I said that before, it's like, 
when the movie started, I immediately knew, like, what it was about. Like, I knew where it was going to go. I knew, like, okay, there's this there's this thing in the sky. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and they have to deal with it, yada, yada, yada. But There's like, a clear through line in Beast of right. a Billion Backs. I, it, I got half an hour into this movie. That's what that's what, nah, that's to your point about the fact that it's segmented. I got half an hour into this movie, and I'm like, has the movie started yet? Like has like has <laughs> <laughs> has whatever the overarching story that's supposed to happen started yet? Because they kind of just do a Futurama episode for the first half hour. Uh, like a, first two half hours, I would say are two. I'd yeah. say the first two parts feel like two Futurama episodes, mm-hmm. uh, and then it switches to all the fantasy stuff. Basically, right? Yeah, yeah. Man, I, was, I thought that I thought that was weird, and that's and I. I I, I'm not I'm not really too big on blaming them for that. I don't really necessarily think that's all the way their fault. Just it's difficult to write something that has to be a film and has to be four episodes of a um, television show at the same time. So I get it. Yeah. And, and I weirdly, you know, I also think they they did it pretty darn well. Three out of four of these. So it's like good on them. You know, like I think right. I think at least. I, I, I quite like I love Bender's big score and I quite like Beast of the Billion Backs and Into the Wild Green Yonder. Uh, and this is the only one where it really feels like it feels like you can really see the seams and it doesn't quite work on both levels for me. Whereas like right. I think it they kind of they were kind of able to make it work pretty well for the other ones. Uh, I I guess I've been thinking about it a lot this week because I've been doing this video and I think like the only thing I can really, I can really determine is the through line is just is Bender's thing. Obviously, it's Bender's game, but it's like right. Bender's the first, the first act is him, like or the first story, the first part is him figuring out that he can imagine things and using his imagination for the first time and discovering D and D, and then that leading him into madness, basically where he's just becoming way too into that, and then the second part is the ramifications of how deep into madness he's fallen where he's in the Mm. insane asylum. And then the second half of the movie is him literally having fallen into the fantasy world. And like they're in this fantasy world that is somehow facilitated through his imagination, which I still do not understand. Right. Yeah. (laughs) I still do not (laughs) understand it. I like I, every time I watch this movie, I try to follow the story with the with the with the crystal and the and the anti backwards crystal and the dark matter and how that makes Bender and I just I I don't get it I do not understand it I can't follow it and I know it's like all nonsense science that's fine but I still can't even follow it by its own pretend logic you know what I mean yeah, yeah, um, yeah. all I know is that somehow the dark matter stuff facilitates Bender's imagination becoming real for a minute for like for a little bit of the movie. And I don't, I still don't, I don't know. I just don't get it. It feels real. It feels real sweaty to me. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Uh, I, I get you. I agree. I just, yeah, it was just, it was hard for me to just get with the program with this one, man. Like I just like, yeah, it was hard for me to, uh, kind of just like, submit to everything that was going on it just and i don't and again this might be uh this might be some kind of personal thing just because like i'm you know i'm not really i wouldn't i wouldn't say that i'm like into this kind of stuff in general you know what i mean so like we talked about how like you know like sometimes people will say that this is their favorite of the films and i think that might be their reasoning maybe if like i think it definitely is i think it's definitely because this is the one fantasy thing they did in futurama and there's definitely a lot of crossover for sci-fi fans and fantasy fans like those are two two big genres of like of fiction that attract like very uh that attract like a certain kind of nerd, you know what I mean? Like that's, yeah, yeah, and yeah, I mean yeah. like, and more than that, there's like, there's so many of us who love this kind of stuff. And I really like fantasy. I think fantasy is great. Uh, I'm more of a sci-fi guy, but I like fantasy a lot. And I like, I super love disenchantment, which is now like these same writers tackling, 
uh, tackling that genre. Right. Um, but I think my big problem with the fantasy elements of this one is they just feel like a parody of fantasy versus its own like take on fantasy. I agree. I agree. It was a lot of it was a lot like, Oh, look what we did with Hermes. Oh, look what we did with Amy. Like, right. A lot of it. And then it got, it kind of, that got, that got tired really quick, especially for somebody that doesn't care about that kind of stuff because it's like, right. Okay. Yeah. This is a, it's a, it's a funny character design, I guess. Like, but that that's kind of like all that's kind of like all it gets out of me. You know what I mean? Like I don't. Yeah. Um, there isn't uh, anything else that like I I, uh, I latched on to, and then I didn't. I don't know. I didn't think it was like necessarily funny um, either. But I don't know if it was just because I didn't. Oh man, I hate talking like this. You know, I don't do like yeah, yeah, I know. videos. We're, and but we're like, also generally so positive on this podcast. So right. Like, yeah. But I, I but I do have things like about this. this I like that we'll talk about later. So let's get some of this stuff we don't yeah. like out of the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know if it's just because I didn't necessarily care about what was going on. But yeah, I didn't. There, I, I do have a couple uh, laughs written down, but like significantly less. Um, yes than everything else i think the the fantasy stuff is especially where i stop laughing and i think it's it feels like they i don't know and i can't tell if like to them the joke was just isn't isn't it funny to see our characters but fantasy versions like you know Mm. what i mean like it felt like that was enough for them in the scripting phase to be like people will think this is funny you know what i mean they'll they'll think it's funny that leela's a centaur and fry is frido instead of frodo and then he becomes Gollum or you know all that stuff it's like right. it's got all of these 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 parody aspects uh and it feels like they were so fixated on that stuff uh that the jokes were really lacking especially especially in the in the back half and i kind of understand that it is hard it's got to be hard to both write good jokes and completely transcode your entire show into a new genre. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So like, I understand and appreciate that that's really hard because this is a, it's different than something like Disenchantment, where you're writing a fantasy world from scratch. And this is one where you have to bring characters that people already know from a sci-fi setting into a fantasy setting, but also make the fantasy setting somehow relatable to the audience. Uh, So I, I, I get that there's the conundrum there of like, how do we do this effectively? But I will also say that I've always felt like Futurama has done such a good job making all of its sci-fi stuff feel, uh, feel unique to its own world building, even when it is inspired by or taking from a different sci-fi. Uh, and it doesn't feel like this fantasy part of the show is, is capable of doing that in the same way, which is a bummer. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Because that's the thing, right? Is that I don't watch a lot of either. I don't watch a lot of fantasy and I don't watch a lot of sci-fi. And I could still, like... Like, I know they're parodying certain things and making fun of certain things when they do certain sci-fi stuff. But, like, that doesn't affect anything. It still feels like Futurama doing Futurama. Right. And I feel like... There's a way to do that here. And like you said, they do that in Disenchantment. So it's like, I feel like there's a way that they could have uh, could have done that here. But a lot of it is just like, um, it's just like very, very blatant parody stuff. And I don't, I see, no, nah, I, I can't even say that. I, I feel like even by the time period where this came out, I feel like the, uh, like the Gollum parody stuff was kind of tired. Like the, yeah this guy was kind of in everything man like and i still do it like oh eight yeah that's true you're not wrong about that um yeah for me it it really does come down to the fantasy stuff not really working for me and then like weirdly they because the through line is bender which is fine that's the one thing that connects to all four parts here is like benders and then i and they kind of have and then i guess they kind of have this this Farnsworth mom story in the background, but because it was so hard to follow, I'm not emotionally connected to it at all. And that Absolutely. seems to be like, that's where you're supposed to be emotionally invested. That's where 
the big emotional turn comes is they the, kinda, is the reveal. They kind of play around a little too much, man, because they keep doing that bit where they're like, oh, I know a secret about him, and here I am, I'm going to say right. it. And then, like, we don't fucking hear it for, like, until, like, literally the last episode. So, like, True. I, I can't care because, like, you keep turning it into a farce. So, like, and I mean, that that's, that's fine, though, because it was funny. Like, I thought the bit was funny. I thought it was a funny bit. But, like, yeah, if that if that's supposed to be the uh, emotional crutch, I don't I don't know if that's probably the way they should have. Um, I don't know. I don't think that's how they should have went about it, maybe. You know what I want to do is I actually I haven't I don't think I've ever done it with this one, but I want to sit down and watch the Hulu version, like watch the watch the broadcast version, watch oh, this yeah. actually <laughs> split up and see what it feels like. You know mm. what I mean? Like, will I be able to track the individual stories when they're cut down better than I can track the overall story? And will that make the, the full journey work better than mm. me trying to figure out what this movie's about? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm curious if that works. So I might do that at some point here. Uh, I really want, I actually really want, I mean, this is just me geeking out. This is just like video creation, geeking out about stuff, but I would like to own, I would like to have hard copies of those versions. Like I wish I, I need to get download. I need to download copies of the like episodic versions of these movies just so I can like <laughs> have they them never, on hand. They didn't throw them in like a season DVD or something like that. They didn't nah, they just a, put they out, they just put out the individual movie oh. DVDs. They never, they never released the hard copies of them. Uh, split up like that but currently that's the only way you can stream them like that's that's how on hulu they're all split up which is i was thinking about this earlier which is like would they even care to fix that like i don't even know if, if like at this point would they even care to fix that like to actually just kind of put them up as put the movies up yeah i mean i don't know i guess it's like it also maybe depends on do they the maybe the question is actually do they have the rights to that like it it could be there could be a difference between the movie rights and the broadcast rights to those to those things um i know that netflix when netflix had futurama it had them in i believe it had them in movie form and now hulu has them in episodic form um but also i think i think netflix had the show in its production seasons, not its broadcast seasons, and Hulu has it in its broadcast seasons. So. Nah, I think. Okay, so this is what I this is what I do know. I do know that Netflix had this show in the same Hulu order because I remember. Oh, it did. I remember, uh, but I didn't know what the hell was going on because I remember in college, I was with someone and they were watching Futurama, and then like they clicked on it. And I was like, there's not 10 seasons of Futurama. What the hell is going on? Like, I, I was really right. confused. <laughs> but now, right. now I get it. Now I understand. Um, yeah, that's that's, why I do remember that. I do remember that they, they had it in that order. I still get comments that are just like, uh, you said there are seven seasons of Futurama, but there are 10. And I'm like, uh, just... <laughs> Just do a Google. Just do a little Google. Come on, man. (laughs) You can figure it out. I feel like I explain it in videos a lot, but people just, like, ignore it. (laughs) In one ear and right out the other one. (laughs) Stuff like that, man. You could literally say something and people would just go, yeah, well, actually, uh, if you think about it, and it's like, I thought about it, man. It took a long time to make this. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I I, I, I thought about it. I don't think you're right. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything in the fantasy world that I like. I really laughed at or liked. I thought it was weird that they made like, I think it made sense to do in the context of Futurama. It makes sense to do the big Farnsworth Igner showdown to make it a Star Wars parody. But that felt so weird within the fantasy thing. Like, oh, you're going to do a Star Wars parody in your fantasy parody of your right. sci-fi parody. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. that's so much. What are you, what's going on here? <laughs> um, and also, like, I was just kind of shocked that, like, this was the movie they chose to do a Star Wars parody in when they had four movies here to do. And I'm like, you're really only going to do... You're going to do only do a Star Wars parody for for your Dungeons and Dragons one. That's right, really yeah. weird. It's a weird choice. It's really ass um, backwards. I do think I do feel like I laughed. Uh, I do think I laughed at like Zoidberg being the tunneling horror. 
I liked that stuff and like Leela fighting him and, and taking him out or like killing killing him thinking he was the tunneling horror. And then I laughed when he goes, uh, uh, ha, to think that removing only one of my two hearts and then she's, wait, what are you doing? And then she pulls out the other heart and he dies. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but then there's the, then afterwards she's just like, I don't regret anything. I killed the tunneling horror. And Zoeberg's like, the tunneling horror? I hate that guy. <laughs> He's like not the tunneling horror. She just killed an innocent Zoidberg, um, which is pretty funny. I thought I thought there's some funny stuff in there, uh, but man, like so much of the fantasy stuff just washes over me. I just mm-hmm. I don't I don't yeah. care that much about it, which is such a bummer. That's actually when my notes stop. I didn't realize it, but I'm looking at it and like <laughs> I said the two notes of the stuff that I already said. Where I said. Uh, I say the medieval stuff is kind of boring and it stops being yeah. funny and stuff happens. And then that's it. I think my last note says, yeah, I'm good. I don't remember what that meant. I think I think I was just really tired. <laughs> I think tired it means you're done then. taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's well, when I tapped out. <laughs> well, then let's talk about the first two parts, because I actually yeah. think the first two parts are pretty good. Um, I think there's some I think there's some really fun stuff in them, uh, even though it doesn't feel like they connect enough to the overall story. Uh, but in the first one, I actually, I think the space demolition derby is cool. Um, I really love, really love the sequence where they steal the ship and then they fly to the demolition derby and it does that song rocket ship. And it's just like this really cool sequence and really good sound design of it flying by. I really like that sequence. I think that's really cool. That is pretty right. Um, I have, yeah, um, that's good stuff. I have filling the tank up with Nobel prize winner sperm is nuts <laughs> and that's where they start to talk about the dark matter stuff i guess right, it's like that's yeah. where they try to tie in the dark matter stuff um that is that's a funny line uh and then the bender learning to have an imagination stuff like i don't care that much about it i do think it starts to get funny when he starts to s- like lose it and see the world as like his fantasy world you know what i mean like mm-hmm. when when he's uh when he's like trying to lance the dragon which is just a bus and he gets run over by a bus uh when he's like when when fry's just like i think you need to stop playing dungeons and dragons and he's like uh he's like i agree buddy i think you're right and then he just goes insane and jumps out his window like right. he's just like oh he's just yeah <laughs> you know what okay let's let me let me bring this up this is uh this is one of the notes that i took I never realized how little sense the architecture of Bender and Fry's building makes. It makes no sense and it never has. Because, <laughs> like, you see the building and, like, they do all the establishing shots. The windows are always vertical. But yep. when you're inside, they're always horizontal. And I never realized that until they do a specific shot in this. <laughs> and and you want to like, know why? Here's And here's exactly why. Okay. It, is, it, all, me, it all it all stems from the very first episode that it was in, which is I Roommate, and the mm-hmm. whole bit, the whole the whole them pulling the rug out from under us at the end of that episode is that Bender's apartment, which we previously thought were just little little closets that the right. robots would stand in, it revealed that oh, they have this whole big apartment that's the closet uh, behind that. So so it's built to look like that. It's built to look like that because it because otherwise it would have given away what uh, okay. they revealed at the end of the episode. And they they constantly change the architecture like the, that. I think that might be the first time we really see their kitchen uh, in that is in this mm. one. And uh, like there's there's episodes like there's the episode Love and Rocket where he can open up the window to like talk to the ship. They just they just you know, it's kind of like the Simpsons house. It changes. It right, changes yeah. depending on what they need early on. Um, but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense because it's like, mm-hmm. and then also there's room. So but Fry has his own room in the closet of Bender's apartment, which is the little thing, you know, it's right. I think they just abandoned what it was originally. Yeah. As to the, give I, them a place to live. Man. I, uh, I normally wouldn't care about this kind of, but it just kind of weirded me out. Like when I, cause the, I don't know what it was about the establishing shot they did, but it, it was very, very close and I was like, yeah. wait, what the fuck? Why the windows like not? And it's crazy because you brought that up. But all I could think about was the ship. 
And I was like, how the hell did the right. ship see them? <laughs> 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 if it's if it's like that. And then of course, like that scene doesn't make any sense anyway, because the ship rings the doorbell from outside of the all right, I'm gonna shut right. up. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. None of it makes sense. It's a bad. It's, oh. it's just it molds to what they need, and that's it. Right. They do a joke in this that's like a Simpsons joke that I hate. So I hate them both. <laughs> but it's uh, you ever see the episode where uh, I think Homer gets into like he gets into like a fight with a badger, and then uh, Lisa says like, "Dad, you're uh." You're all scratched up. Shouldn't you go to the hospital? And he said, well, yeah, maybe. Maybe I can get them to look at this. And then he pulls his shirt up and then all his organs are just Oh, out. yeah. Like, and they do that here where, like, <laughs> Soyberg just, like, opens the... Prof- I fucking oh, hate that. that <laughs> yeah. That's funny because I thought... I, I, It does gross me out, but I did think there was some funny... There were some funny moments in it. But I actually, funny enough, thought you were referring to one other thing in this, ep- in this same movie, which is Fry... Uh, Fry doing a joke. He's like, I never thought I could swallow a so- f- swallow a softball, but I but I did my best oh, and I, I did it. I don't and he hate pulls that. up his shirt and he's got like the big, but <laughs> he's got the big thing. He's like, oh, that's not it. <laughs> not right, she yeah. blows. I, I, I think that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, good, that's actually a good joke. <laughs> I think I think um, that's funny. It's the oh, it's the it's the it's the characters that I care about exposed organs that I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? And it's just, well, okay. So I'll, I'll shoot some bail and say that it makes much more sense for this to happen in Futurama than it does in the Simpsons. Sure. That shouldn't, the way that Simpsons joke plays out is like surreal because like, okay. So the only way I can attribute it is going to that, uh, the Treehouse of horror, um, Fuck, I forget the name of it, but it's the it's a it's a classic one. It's the one where uh where Homer he keeps like going to different dimensions and time traveling, and then like the last one has like Oh yeah, yeah, shit. yeah. Uh and like I can't remember the name uh, of it, but that's a classic. Right. And then Lisa's like uh at least I think it's this segment. I'm probably being dumb. But Lisa's like, Dad, your hand's in the toaster. And she like freaks out. And he like, it's like this really big deal that his hand's in yeah. the toaster. And then you compare that to like when he pulls his shirt up and like there's just organs out. And Lisa just right. stands there <laughs> and she doesn't react. And the crazier thing is one of those is in a Trials of Horror where that kind of thing actually would play. Right. <laughs> and they freak out about it. And the other one's in right. a regular episode. That's wild. Yeah. Um, that is wild. I, I actually, you know, what's funny is I actually thought about when I actually weirdly thought about the hand in the toaster joke when you were talking about the, <laughs> so the badger funny. thing. That's such a good joke. But the funnier, the funnier thing is after he gets it out and he's calm, he goes, it's in there again. <laughs> <laughs> it's so so funny i love it so much oh man um actually going back though i just thought about this because i was thinking about fry and bender on the ship at the beginning of the episode and there i really like there's a delivery i really love and it's when it's after bender is like at the kids make fun of him for uh for not being able to like imagine anything and uh and he goes and it, just the way he delivers, Fry, do I have an imagination? <laughs> Fry's like, I don't know, Bender. Were the other kids making fun of you? <laughs> it's, like, it's just like a, it's like a, a mother daughter situation, or like a son, yeah. and, a mom and son situation, or something. And uh, and then uh, and then just the way Bender goes, mm-hmm, they said I couldn't imagine things, <laughs> which is very it's very funny delivery. I love it a lot. I like when they talk to each other like that because I like. I like uh, in uh, Devil's Hands where like Bender's just kind of like Fry's mom uh, at like the uh, in the beginning. <laughs> oh yeah, at the yeah. at the holophone recital. Right. Yeah. I hope to see you later for tea. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, a classic. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like like I said, there are some really. I think the I think the first half of this movie does have some really funny stuff. Like that's that's really funny. Um. I think. And I do think that some of like Fry or some of Bender going crazy is really fun. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. especially love the whole Ben or the whole Leela's anger problems subplot. That I forgot part, about that. Yeah, it's like 
they they give her a shock collar she's got like a sh- it's right. just weird and i feel like it never really it kind of ties to her whatever the heck lesson she learned in the fantasy world about violence or whatever uh but it i don't know it's it's not my favorite and it feels like i don't know like i feel, i just don't like it when the show is like uh, like, oh, the woman is being too, like, too strong and abrasive. We better, we better, like, you know, take her down a notch. And it feels like mm. Futurama maybe does that a few too many times over the course of the show. Um, but, I mean, they kind of do, we'll talk about this one next week, because Into the Wild Green Yonder has some, some weird commentary on, like, gender stuff, too. But, okay. uh, but this one, at least, part one is, like, got the fun part one has the fun uh demolition derby the good bender fry mm. stuff bender starting to lose his mind i think that all works that all works yeah. for me i thought all of that stuff was I, I did i thought all that stuff was fine i thought it was just like a normal future on right episode it feels thing. like an episode right it was just like i think what the only thing and again it's not it's not even the episode's fault but the only thing that like had me raising my eyebrows was like Okay, this is cool, but what the hell is the movie about? Like, that's kind of just right. what I, like what my brain was doing at a certain point. Again, it's not totally. the episode's fault. Well. Um, and and then I think part two actually is all is probably the funniest part of any of these because part two brings us back to the Hal Institute, which was from the same place as an insane in the mainframe where where Bender and Fry right. were sent. Um, and we get to see all those characters again and they're v- still very funny. Like the Mad Hatter bot telling everyone to change places, Roberto, uh, saying like, ah, they, they tried to make an insane robot, but they failed. <laughs> you know, and that was like, I love Roberto. Anything Roberto is funny when he stabs, he stabs the vending machine robot and he like coughs up red candy. Like it's blood. Basically. <laughs> that stuff is super funny. Uh, and I like. I like a lot of the like like any robot insane asylum stuff made me laugh a lot. Um, and then the other thing I really like in this one is uh, Walt, Larry and Igner, the mom's three kids trying to go steal the crystal and pretending they're owl exterminators. I, I just mm. laughed every time Igner was like, we're owl exterminators. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I thought that was good. Funny deliveries there. Those are those are really good. And then also like. <laughs> and there's a part where Farnsworth just has a trained owl. He like he like attacks them with his trained owl, which makes me laugh on its own for some reason. Um, is part two is part two the part that because this is there was this there was this bit that killed me because it, it, it was just kind of like what the fuck are you doing? It's uh it's with the kill bots. It says all kill bots to section 15. What did she say? What did you say? And they're both shooting already. So they like turn yeah, to so each other and like kill each other. <laughs> yes, that is in part two. Part okay. two is definitely the funniest. Yeah, like that's really funny. I also crack up my favorite line and probably the, my I think <laughs> it makes me laugh every time. It's the one joke I think of in this movie that like is a standout joke. And mm. it's when they're sneaking into mom's like facility or whatever, her dark matter facility. And, and the professor falls from like a really high height and he just lands on his feet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he just like perfectly lands and he goes, and he goes, huh? So that's why they call me the cat man. Yeah, <laughs> Which, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's super funny. <laughs> that makes me laugh every single time. <laughs> that's so stupid. and funny. Pretty funny. There's another part um, where he's uh. There's a line I wrote down because I wrote I wrote it down because I thought it was the funniest line so far just because it's so stupid. Uh, I think it's because I think he's talking about uh, Igner's his name, right? I already forgot. Uh, Igner is his son. Yes. Yeah. So I think he's talking about Igner and he says, uh, so it makes me embarrassed to call myself homo. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just... yeah. He's talking. No, he's. I think he's talking to Cupert in that. I think he's. Uh, oh, no, okay. being in. He says like something like it's like a full on. It's a full on biology joke where he it, and uh, right. And he's he's like uh, even being in the same genus as uh, genus as you <laughs> makes me embarrassed is. to call myself homo. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay, <laughs> that's how it starts. It's, yeah. it's really funny. Yeah, that's a that's a really. That's a really good science joke. <laughs> it's really funny. Right. Um, yeah, man. It's like, 
it it feels to me like I I like everything. I I like this movie until it hits the fantasy world. I don't love it before that, but I like it. I uh, I, there's yeah. a lot I really like, and then and then as soon as it hits the fantasy world, it just feels like it, it reaches a screeching yeah. halt. Clock and out. I don't. Yeah, and it's and it's a bummer because I like I know a lot of people. I mean, I know a lot of people like it, and I know a lot of people were waiting for them to do a fantasy thing in Futurama because like these are definitely like fantasy dorks as well sci-fi and fantasy dorks but it does feel um i don't know it's i wish i almost wish they had just done like a something something closer to one of the anthology episodes to do a fantasy world you know what i mean like uh right actually you know what that kind of goes to the the next point I was going to make, but go keep going. Cause I think you're right. Yeah. I was just going to say like they, I mean, I guess I don't love those episodes that much in the revival when they do the anthology stuff other than reincarnation, which is really good. They have like themed anthology ones, which I feel like a fantasy one could have worked because you, you eliminate yourself from having to explain why the fantasy world exists. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You can just do something fun with it. You can just be like, here's the fun parody. Uh, in the same way that they did Leela in the Wizard of Oz world. You know what I mean? Like the same, like that same kind of vibe. Um, or even if they had done a what if machine right. again, which obviously they only did two of, but if they, you know, that explains it. What if we lived in a fantasy right. world? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's like, it's like, well, that's all you need to know, you know? Um, right. So I don't know. I, um, it's, it does. Yeah. It feels like they, I, I wish I could have bought more the explanation for how we got to the fantasy world. I wish I could uh-huh. just even followed it. I didn't even need to buy it. Just followed it. <laughs> right. I do, I do think your point about it being like, maybe if they like anthology it or whatever, like broke it up because I think maybe it's the time. Maybe it's the time and the fact that they're trying to tell this story with it. That's uh that's hindering it because like, again, like I said, I don't particularly like, like uh, a lot of fantasy stuff. However, one of my favorite Phineas episodes is a fantasy one. It's uh, I think it's called a Scalifer. It's like a, they do something similar. Like they put them in a completely different timeline and like they're going on a quest and all of this shit. And like, but it was 11 minutes. So like, I, Got in, got out. There was enough time to do a lot of really dense jokes, make it really funny. Uh, The jokes don't just hinge on, okay, uh, let's see what they turned this character into. All the characters are more or less the same except a few. Um, And like, yeah, I don't know. I felt like I felt like that worked better um, for me personally. And I feel like maybe if they just if they did do something like that, That'd be pretty rad too. I feel like honestly, man, like that would have been a good film in general. Like regardless of even doing fantasy, right? If they if they just use the fact that they had to break these up into four things, right? To their advantage, if they did a what if machine, if they did a what if machine with four different what ifs, but they were all half I mean? an hour. <laughs> yeah, and like, just do a full episode. What? Yeah, if. that yeah, could have been great. Yeah, that's a good idea. We should we should call the past. Please <laughs> see, we'll see if they can do something. We can do something about this. They might turn that one. Uh, into I did just remember. Well, I I think I talked about this in another episode. They also have the return of Nibbler without any explanation for how he returned from oh. having eaten himself. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Which, <laughs> but I, That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> he, just, he just got kidnapped from where? From his own stomach, he got kidnapped, I guess. Uh, and then he... Um, and then they also, like I said this in other episodes, and I say it in the video that you've pro- may- many of you have maybe already seen, but mm-hmm. him... Fry saying you didn't wipe our memory, so we down, didn't forget yeah. that you talked. It's such it's such 
it's so dumb. That's bad dialogue. It's, it's dog it shit. doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's dog shit. Just, you forgot. It, <laughs> you forgot yeah, to you do this never... thing that I didn't know that you did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, you, it's dog shit. you don't know about the memory wipes. It was memory wiped. Right. <laughs> you don't yeah, know about shit. it. <laughs> uh, it's so annoying. It annoys me so much. Um, but I also did just remember another. <laughs> Another joke that I actually like in the fantasy sequence. Real, this is a really okay. funny joke. It's when they're going through the cave of hopelessness and they're like, they're worried about the name. They're like, oh no, should we be in here? And he's like, it's just named after Reginald Hopelessness. <laughs> which, <laughs> which is a, that's a funny joke. I like that a lot. Um, and then the tunneling horror shows up. So he was because, oh yes, because <laughs> Reginald Hopelessness was the first person to be eaten by the tunneling horror. So it immediately comes back around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's immediately. Yeah. No, we probably shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. But uh, again, duh. I just don't know. I don't. Um, I don't. Don't love the fantasy stuff. And it's always yeah. so jarring to me when it switches between the sci-fi and the fantasy. Like when they whipped into the fantasy world, it was like this feels weird. Like this feels right. weird. And then even when they end, it reaches the climax in the fantasy world and immediately we're pulled back into the sci-fi world. And it's just right. like, what am I watching? Like, yeah, why is why yeah, am I yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I don't don't love that. Um I do think there's some funny you know, I don't even I don't hate I don't hate the moments between Igner and the professor at the end when he finally like comes around and hugs him. And they both ate the crystals. And I like Igner saying, we both ate the crystals. Like, the way he says it is pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just wish they had done more to make me really care about that bond right. and relationship and what it meant overall. And I think, yeah, like, kind of... With it. Yeah. It's a bummer. It's a bummer that that uh, didn't work out that so, well. Uh, is this where we found out that Wormstrom is uh, mom's ex? uh that's a good question this might I, did, I, I wrote be... it down because i felt like i didn't know that um, yeah i think this might be yeah i think that might be right i don't remember learning that before this right um i i, I again and... i've never seen the film and i i, I was i'm like i didn't know that like which definitely I... implies that mom's older sons are wernstrom's kids and then, that's actually pretty funny that it is the, uh, this the slightly more competent ones are Warren Strums. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's true. I mean, Igner's related to Fry, so <laughs> that's true too. Yeah, yeah, might be some um, like Simpsons gene stuff going on there. <laughs> <laughs> the the first explanation for why Homer is stupid before the crayon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which both, I think I think frankly, both of them are dumb. Both are I, bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I wanna uh, yeah. I wanna reiterate that that they both come from my least favorite era of the show, and I think they're both dumb. <laughs> hey, it looks like this is just a Simpsons tangent, but it looks like Matt Selman's kinda like primary showrunner right now. It seems like he's doing more episodes this coming season than, yeah. than Al is. I feel like I'm I was uh, I feel like I was talking to Nick about this a couple months ago, but like yeah, I noticed that even in like the last uh, season, you know how like, um, which is something that Simpsons always did is that they'll, uh, when the episode ends, the first executive produced by would be the showrunners and then the second would just be Matt and uh, James and Sam. Uh, right. when, they, uh, when they did it a few times in the last season, I just remember seeing Matt and I remember going like, huh. Oh, really? Yeah, I remember going like, huh, this might mean something. <laughs> I think this yeah, I think this might actually yeah, uh, mean something. I think it does cuz it cuz it looks like every season cuz Al Jean show ran for obviously so many years, but then starting with season like 23, every season there would be a few episodes that he and Selman co-show ran those episodes. And it was like Got it. It was three episodes for a few seasons and then four and then five and then like and then season 31 they co-ran seven. Um so it Jeez. seems like now within season 32, um, that might that seems to be where uh, they started letting him do do his uh, do his own show running for some episodes. 
And honestly, like I think he's uh, I think he's the choice, man. He's been he's he's done a lot he's of episodes I like over the years. He's been there for a while. He's done a lot of stuff that was he was on the movie. He was like I think he was like the head writer on the Simpsons game. Jeez. Uh, yeah, he's done. He's been like a big part of the Simpsons for right. a long time. So I'm very stoked for him. And I hope and, you know, like, I mean, we've we've echoed this for a long time, but I like I like and appreciate the Simpsons changing showrunners it was a thing they did for so many years and i wish right. they had had rotated more just take it, not take not, it in a not to hate al Jean. like i like love al Jean. like right. i'm not gonna not gonna hate him but but i just like the fresh the fresh blood thing get new exactly. people in there take it yeah. in a new direction man like if you're gonna make it if you my uh i had an uncle that like when he was in traffic and somebody was driving stupid he was like he would always say like if you're gonna drive then drive and that's kind of how i feel about this show like if you're gonna make it then make the show like you know what i mean like right. do something like do something different take it in a different direction do stuff that we haven't seen before because totally. like i said like you know like al Jean is really funny and he's really smart and he's made some of the best episodes of the show and even though people don't like his extremely long run where he show ran, that that wasn't the first time he show ran because he show ran what was that three and four like so with uh with Mike, so like yes he show ran three and four with Mike Reese right uh, which are it's honestly the more I watch three Great. and four they like I I mean it's funny this is just the case for me for every early Simpson season, the more I watch a season, the more I'm like, this is the best one. And then I watch another <laughs> season. I'm like, wait, this is the best one. <laughs> <laughs> you got to You got a hard stamp it, man. I hard stamp. Seven, I'll lock in seven. That's my answer. Seven is always going to be my answer. I'm going to hard stamp it at some point, but I think I need, you know what I think I'm going to, I'm going to do though. I think, I'll, I think I'll have a hard stamp once we talk about those, those early seasons here on the pod. Once we've like, once okay. I've really talked through them, I feel like that's when I'll be able to be like, hmm, now I yeah, now I know that's which one when, I like. That's when you'll be able to go, yeah, it's 16. That's it. <laughs> that's the Season one. I can't get it. Season 16 is the best one. Yeah, I can't get enough of Jazzy and the Pussycats. <laughs> I, think, I think that's the only 16 episode title I know. And that might not be 16. If it's not 16, I'm going to be pissed. Somebody in the comments <laughs> will let me know, I guess. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. You better let us know in the comments. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I. It's funny. I don't know. Like my my views on The Simpsons keep changing over the years. Like, I I still think seasons like still for me one through eight are just like the height of television for me. Like I yeah, yeah, I yeah, fucking yeah. love them so much. But for a long time I was like a like a season six, seven and eight guy. And I, and I still really, really love those, but like all of a sudden, some of those early seasons are really starting to stand out to me. Um, mm. Like season, I, I grew like a deep affinity for season one within the last few years, even though it's not my favorite one. I think I, I'm just I, fascinated by season one. Yeah, me too. It's definitely partially yeah. that it's because season one is a different, it's a very different show mm -hmm. and it's not, it's not it doesn't represent what I ultimately would love most about The Simpsons, but it does do things that are so different and kind of bold and unique that no right. other Simpsons does that. I now I go back and look at it, I'm like, wow, that is that's crazy that this was the first season of The Simpsons. This is so right. different. I um, think, and uh, it, yeah, I think the first season has one of my favorite episodes of the show, uh, which is um there's no disgrace like home the uh the shock therapy one yeah uh, that's a good one just because it's like it's a really good episode but it's it's damn near not the simpsons like it's like yes homer is the one that is concerned about the family like and he pawns the tv like all of this stuff that would never happen you know what i mean yeah but i think that's why i'm so fascinated by it and it like and it looks weird. Like I like looking yep. at season one because it just looks really, really weird. Like they make a lot of really weird yeah. choices. But every once in a while they'll do like a really great drawing. Like Yeah, I don't know. And what, you know uh, what my, what's so, the, uh, the one you like a lot? Uh I was just gonna say I was gonna bring it up. My favorite season one is Moaning Lisa. Oh, that's not the one I was gonna bring up that I know oh. that you like. I know that you like uh Crepes of the it's called Crepes of Wrath, right? Is that the name of the episode? Oh, 
I don't love Crepes of Wrath. That was the episode that I brought up because that was the first episode that aired in my life. Uh, oh, that's okay. why I brought that one up. Yes, oh, my brain. I'm old. All right, all right. Yeah, um, I remember that. I remember yeah. that. I remember that. Uh, but but there but that is also another very interesting episode like because Bart, it, they, he just speaks French. He just speaks <laughs> and it's French. Just subtitles the and there's the whole subplot about about their their foreign exchange student trying to steal the nuclear plans from Homer. It's yeah. wild. It's got a lot going on. Um, Moaning Lisa though is my favorite season one episode and one of my favorite episodes of the whole show. It's good, uh, but is another one that feels very different. It's like a very different feeling than a lot of the other other Simpson stuff. And you know, it's interesting looking at this. Now you're, you're, you like, no, there's no disgrace like home. I like moaning Lisa. You know what those two have in common? What was that? They were written by Al Jean and Mike Reese. Ah, ah it's full <laughs> circle, man. Yeah. Baby, we just yeah. moved the pieces. There we go. I mean, we did we're the doing, science on the science. season one. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> did the science oh, on season it. one. I love it. We just um, did more science then what's in this entire film? <laughs> Let the record be known. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, it's funny. Like, I always thought of, you know, I, I, but even like going back season, looking at season two of The Simpsons, which is still run, still run by those same three dudes, uh-huh. feels very different than season one. Very, yeah. but season, season two has some like, classics man i mean bart bart gets an f is the first episode say, of season doesn't two it fucking start with bart gets an f which is like a really great episode it's like bart an, gets an all timer yeah uh such such a great episode it has um, my favorite bit of character animation in the history of the show where bart just breaks into tears it's dude. relentlessly heartbreaking like i make fun of it some like i use it sometimes my videos to like make fun of people but yeah it's so good because I've never seen crying animated that well. Right. <laughs> like he breaks, he literally breaks in half. It's and it's and it's and it really sells it. It really sells it. Like you feel yeah. so heartbroken for Bart. Um, but there are so many. Like, I mean, even just the second one, Simpson and Delilah, the one where Homer gets the hair That's hair, the hair one. formula. Okay, yeah. All right. yeah, Dead Putting Society is such a good episode. Again, uh, vastly different but yeah yeah um one fish two fish blowfish bluefish dude right that's that's a crazy episode where homer thinks he's gonna die (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) it's wild it's it's it's, and you know it it's fine it's funny to think about that one thinking about them dealing with the fact that homer's gonna that homer might um might die because they you know like they do it again when the show was more fully realized and uh triple bypass Mm -hmm. and it's interesting to see how they both handle uh the emotion and what the series was and what it became right Um, even though that's just they're like isn't triple bypass is like four right so they're like only two seasons apart but they do it totally differently yeah it's season Um, four yep super differently (sighs) isn't dancing homer in there too dancing homer is is early that's like episode five Dude, the whole season is wild. Like it's, it's also got, uh, oh brother, where at that where they introduce or int- Herb. introduce Herb, which I wish they had gone back to Herb. Like they did two, and I love them both, and I right. can't believe they never brought him back. I okay, I thought I was like, I don't know if I missed something, but I th- I thought about this maybe a couple days ago. I'm like, like so why not? <laughs> like, I know. You do everything is else. Is it hard now? to get Danny DeVito? They're just having a hard time getting <laughs> getting DeVito in it there. Be, uh, it can't be that. I love no. Danny DeVito, but it can't be that hard. <laughs> I feel like he would want to do it. Right. Um, the DeVito. other one, the other two that I really love in season two is is I really like Three Men in a Comic Book. I, we're, Three Men in a Comic Book isn't very funny, but I really, I don't know. I just connect to that story, and I really like. I really like the climax of them, like, you know, having to save, having they, they have to save uh, who's falling. They have to save one of the one of the three kids instead of yeah, save the comic remember. book. Um, right. But season two also has Lisa Substitute, which is like just an all timer right. in my. That's what that's my uh, Lisa, my friend Ed from college. That's his favorite episode. That was one that as a kid I never, 
it was like on a, it was on a V I have all these VHSs, but I had them as a kid and I had Lisa substitute on one of those VHSs. And I remember watching it and being it being kind of the one that I wouldn't watch that often because I was like, oh, it's just like it's not as it's not as funny. It's kind of more emotional. Uh, and I watched it. I watched it a few months ago when I got these VHSs again for my little tiny CRTV. And I, it was the first time I had watched it in a long time. And I just like it. It broke me that you are you are Lisa Simpson yeah. broke me. <laughs> it was like I was just like watching my watching my tiny CRTV on VHS sobbing in my bed because oh, <laughs> I'm watching a 20, a 30 year old <laughs> Simpsons episode. <laughs> it's wild. Oh, man, I love the Simpsons. Good little Simpsons tangent there. I can't. Yeah, we got to cover the Simpsons soon, man. We got it. We we had to pad the episode out with something, man. We had to give y'all something because it's kind of is there isn't enough ways where we could go. Yeah, man. I just kind of wasn't feeling. <laughs> we did a pretty good job, though. We did a pretty yeah. good job really discussing Bender's game before we went on our Simpsons tangent. We right. we went through each little part. We talked about the fantasy stuff. We talked about the stuff that worked. Uh, we even ended more positively than negatively. I would say that right. when we when we got to we got to the stuff we liked towards the end, and I think that was a I think that was the way to do it. <laughs> Come mm. out thinking about the things we liked about it instead of the things we didn't like about it. Yeah, it's just kind of uh, hard to do this with this one because there isn't a lot of uh, character stuff going on. Not like Big exactly, Store or even like the last one. Like. And there isn't just a lot of beast with a bi- yeah beast with a billion backs has the whole the, the whole jealousy thematic like ties uh-huh. to everything and and there's there's a lot you can you can you can really pinpoint what like what journey Fry and Bender go on over the course of that movie. Right. Um, this one I can't. I can only pinpoint that Bender goes insane and then creates a fantasy world and then even the and then the the solution of the movie is not about that. It has nothing to right. do with that. <laughs> it's he yeah. just comes back through the portal with them and everything's fine. Um, and the next movie, which we'll obviously talk about next week with a, with a special guest uh, who you guys will all like a good friend of ours. And uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, but that is one. That's a movie that I feel is a little overstuffed. And I feel like it also, you can really see the seams of it being segmented, not to the same degree as Bender's game, but even though that's the case, there are some really strong character stuff that that you can hold on to through most of it through it's and it's a lot of Fry and Leela centric stuff that that I think works really well overall in, in, in the Wild Green Yonder. So we'll talk about that mm-hmm. next week because that's uh, that's definitely the highlight of that one for me. Yeah. Um, but man, it's uh, yeah, we're almost done with these movies, man. We got one more. Yeah. There we do. Yeah, we got one more. <laughs> How you feeling? Can't Did wait. you at least though? Have you enjoyed this this coming back to Futurama though? I have. I miss Futurama. I really. Yeah, did. we got we got to figure out uh, <clears throat> when will when we get into those revival seasons, which you haven't seen much of, which will be really interesting. Right. Um, yeah. And I do think just a heads up to the people at home when we cover those seasons, even though we've been going by production season for everything else we got to split those in half because they're 26 episode production seasons. Mm -hmm. So we'll go season six, part one, season six, part two, season seven, part one, season seven, part two, which is going to be 13 episodes a piece each time. Um, We'll watch them in the correct order. They did, they did air them slightly out of order in some of the seasons on in the broadcast order. So we'll watch them in the proper order. Mm -hmm. Um, But, uh, but it's pretty minimal and it's, uh, yeah, it's I'm I'm excited to eventually get there, but we got to do Archer first we do. <laughs> and uh, and I don't know. We probably shouldn't go immediately back to Futurama. We got to figure out what the heck yeah. we're going to do after Archer. We got Archer coming up. We got a couple seasons of Archer coming up. Then we're going to do Rick and Morty season five when that's over and then back to Archer and we'll probably stop Archer at Vice and then and then maybe try something else. Right. Because uh, there's still. Well, then there's still six seasons after that of Archer to, to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but so many cartoons, I, man. It's so many. And I'd like, um, I mean, I'd like to start The Simpsons at some point. We got to do it at some point. I can't, Those are long, I can't get enough of The Simpsons, man. I, I, I would. 
It's gonna be those so episodes tough, will though, be man. five hours because but I wouldn't not shut only will the they be up. five hours because we have so much to say, but they're also twenty to twenty four episodes a season. Okay, yeah, what is that too? <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna kill us. It might the we might also have to split those. We might have to record them all in one go and then just say we're editing these half at a time <laughs> because <laughs> season three is 24 episodes man that's so much we we barely got through yeah. a 19 like a 22 episode uh, a season of of futurama <laughs> season six is 25 episodes i think yeah i think after a while they just kind of turn into 26 for a couple years i just got a good idea for what we're gonna do to very ever so slightly stop us to help us on that season that season ends with who shot mr burns part one and then season seven starts with who shot mr burns part two we should do a separate episode for who shot mr burns oh you think so (laughs) i think we should there's so much there's a lot to talk about with who shot mr burns uh yeah yeah. did i who knows (laughs) uh so that the reason i know that there's a lot to talk about with those is because just when I thought I knew everything about them, uh, when when Jims, when the real Jims did his video, he did his video series about like who really shot Mr. Burns, just a whole bunch of fun theory stuff. Right. And in the first one he did, he was just kind of going over all the evidence that they used uh, for Maggie. And the last thing he said blew my mind, which was something that I didn't realize, which is that when Mr. Burns asks who's going to stop me, Maggie's the only one that doesn't look away. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, that is the sickest detail I've ever seen. I didn't even know that existed. Maybe we got to get Jim's on for that one. I would love to. (laughs) We could just put his music under the whole uh, podcast track. That would be pretty good. Oh, man. Well, um, got anything else? Any other cartoon stuff you want to talk about before we uh, before we sign off on on Bender's game? Any other uh, exciting things happening right now in the world of cartoons? Exciting things happening in the world of cartoons. Um, There's a few new shows that are. Been that, yeah, that's recently. what I was thinking about. I was thinking about some of the. There's that the show, show. The China, Illinois guys got a show coming out on, I think, Paramount Plus. Crap, oh, so that is what them. Called. Yeah, I'm pretty it's sure. the Harper House thing. Yes, Harper House, Harper House. Right. Okay, I, yeah. It's interesting because the backgrounds look like you're kind of look like a Fox animated show. Like the backgrounds are like uh, they've they've got more of that vibe. But then the characters just look like look more like the what's the guy's name? Brad Neely. Is that it? Um, Mm. But I know exactly. And uh, man, I saw somebody call it like family guy. And it's like just because something has round eyes. (laughs) <laughs> no, it doesn't, doesn't look anything mean like that. that. Yeah, stop it. We got to stop this. Uh, <laughs> stop so it. Just like how you guys man. are sick of the art style. I'm sick of you guys lumping everything just because they have similar traits. <laughs> I'm sick it of is weird, shit. though, because the, the backgrounds of the show are, are really like pretty detailed. Mm-hmm. And then the character models are actually not very detailed. Like right. with those little round noses. It's an interesting contrast. It's, it's like the um, good dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it kind of yeah. is it kind of is that's a good comparison <laughs> um they also just announced that what was that show um based on a twitter account the um I, the yeah Ch- Chicago i saw Party that thing Ant. too yeah um i don't know anything about that twitter account or that show all i know Me is either. that it's going to be on netflix uh and it's coming september 17th we'll see they're eating deep dish pizza in the photo, so it's oh you know God. it's Chicago. <laughs> but they're also eating it with their hands, which is not how you eat deep dish pizza. Come on, guys. Oh. <laughs> it's a casserole. You have to use a fork. <laughs> you have to. Maybe they moved uh, to Chicago. Maybe they do. And they, and they don't know. You know what I mean? Like or they, maybe that could be it. That could yeah. be it. Oh man! Um, other uh, this is only tangentially related. Uh, apparently, uh, Trey Parker, Matt Stone want to want to invest and buy Casa Bonita, which filed for bankruptcy <laughs> in April. You sent that article. <laughs> Was that you that sent that? I just didn't yeah. read it. Like I, I saw the headline note, I just kind of chuckled a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's real. 
it's real. They want, and they, and it's funny. I was actually just listening to some old interviews with them for some of my videos. And they talked mm-hmm. about that in one of their, one of their interviews, how they, a, they were talking about like maybe wanting to do a theme park one day. And then they immediately went into, well, we were going to buy Casa Bonita when they, when they were in <laughs> financial trouble, but we missed out. We missed our opportunity. And now it's happening again. And they're like, I think you're going to do it. I think they're actually oh, going to wow. do it. And honestly, if they do it, I'm making the trip, man. My mom yeah. lives in Colorado now. I don't know how far from Casa Bonita my mom lives, but I'm going. I'm going to <laughs> Casa Bonita. Uh, man, good stuff. That episode rules. I haven't seen that in years. Um, how you doing? How you feeling? You got anything else you want to talk about? Any anything you want to get off your chest? Uh, now, nah, man, I'm on break. <laughs> I, I am on vacation. All I got to do is just watch a bunch of stuff for this. That's literally all yeah. I'm doing. Into the uh, Wild Beyonder, Archer season two. Mm-hmm. We got to make sure uh, we're caught up on Rick and Morty, right? And which uh, is like I was doing that anyway. So right, same, uh, same. Loving two again, Birdie two again, Birdie might be my favorite show that's airing right Dude, now. Me uh, too. It's so. I saw good. A, I saw a clip from um, this new Disney Channel cartoon called uh, "The Ghost and Molly McGee." I saw a clip. They released oh, I've heard recently. about it, but I haven't watched a clip. The, honestly, after seeing that clip, I feel like that show might become my favorite show on TV. <laughs> Cause, Hell yeah. uh, favorite animated show. Because I just kind of, it has like that energy that I really missed. You know what I mean? Like that. Like, oh, yeah, I'm watching the theme song now. I, yeah. Yeah. Just eat, the way it's animated and like the way it's voice acted. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to fucking love this. So yeah i can't wait for that i can't wait for that that's gonna be right Ooh. well i'm gonna check that one out coming in october yeah. <laughs> we got lots of cartoons happening uh and i don't know that's all i got that's all i got so i think that's gonna i think it's probably where we should wrap this wrap this yeah, baby we're gonna, up we're gonna call it on bender's game even though we called it maybe yeah. 15 minutes ago but it's yeah fine. it's fine <laughs> or we could we could keep talking about the simpsons for a little bit i don't care I, uh, <laughs> yes actually if we keep talking about the simpsons i might drink so maybe we should stop <laughs> <laughs> um should we announce our guests should we announce our upcoming guests oh should we tell them we got, should we rip the band-aid we got off? at least we got at least four confirmed which we should we should we One, two. Should, yeah Who's the, oh, dumb and idiot. All right, never mind. Yeah, I forgot two, of, two of whom we've had before. Two right. of whom we've had before. Um, let's do it. All right, who, who we got into the wild green on your next week? Who we got, Tariq? We got we got uh, Nick Tendo, good friend of mine, good yeah. friend of Johnny's, <laughs> friend friend of the show, as they say, friend of the show, Nick yeah. Tendo. Your friend of the show, <laughs> Nick Tendo. Uh, very excited to have Nick on. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to talk Into the Wild Green Yonder, which is what he wanted to talk about. That was his requested movie uh, right. of these movies. We almost punished him to make him talk about his least favorite, The Beast with a Billion Back. But he said, but, <laughs> he <can't>, every, <laughs> every time we brought it up, you remember every time we brought it up, he was, no. <laughs> uh, and uh, then for Archer season two, we're bringing back uh, one of a guest, a guest we've had previously, uh, the incomparable offbeat Kiki. They are going to join us for Archer season two, and it's going to be great. Uh, yes. Then either for season three or four of Archer, I haven't, we haven't figured it out yet. Uh, we're also bringing back, uh, much requested Whitney Van Lanningham of Whitney Vision. Very excited. And uh, and then for yes. Archer Vice, our friend, uh, one, of, one of our very good friends and just a lovely, <laughs> a lovely fellow. Friend uh, of the show. Yes, so many D'Angelo. friends of the shows. <laughs> uh, D'Angelo Edwards of Hats Off Media. Hats Off Media. Hats Off. Hats Off to all four of our guests who will be coming uh, and then, you know, we'll still be doing some that are just us. I think whichever of those Archer seasons that we don't have a guest on, uh, we'll probably just do alone. And I think we're going right. to do our uh, Rick and Morty season five uh, by ourselves as well. Yeah. Uh, well we, you didn't know, keep do, it... uh, we didn't do a Rick and Morty alone. We yeah, did exactly. All, all four we did Look, with guests. So. And so we'll uh, we'll we'll try to we'll try to keep keep doing just us and then bring in guests, you know, alternated as much as we can. And I think that works great. I think it keeps us on our toes. I agree. Uh, and with that, 
I think it's time to say thank you to Mikey Yunez for producing and editing our podcast. Thank you to thanks, Carrie Mike. Feek for inc- yeah, and thanks for <laughs> uh, th- thanks to Carrie Feek for incredible artwork, which we will put on some merch soon. Uh, we promise we'll get you some merch. Um, thank you to Jake Neutron for that theme song. It is stuck in my head most weeks. And mm-hmm. thank you, Tariq, for talking about uh, Bender's game with me and uh, and getting oh. through it, even though we didn't love this one. Yeah, and thank you to Johnny for spearheading us talking about Bender's game. Yeah, and you know what? I think this is a good episode, so I think we really nailed it. I think we did a good job here. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope so. Uh, and with that, uh, thank you very much. And sure. we'll talk to you next week. Uh, have a good Bye. one, folks. And- See you later. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Are you eating pizza right now? No, I'm not. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs>